So today I'd like to just go quickly over um, Erm Walter's recent um, digital transformation journey to John Barton. Um, this started around you now two years ago um, with with the use of and, and with Rickster. Um, I am IT Solutions Architect with Erm Walter, uh, focusing primarily on, on APIs um, and integration and to a certain extent also other bespoke, bespoke software. You obviously, I, I'm assuming you all know um, what Ermota is, um, we're on the news um, too many times, uh, but what are our, our challenges as, as, as an airline? It's obviously highly competitive, especially even in Malta with, with low-cost airlines. We are a small company in a small island, so economies of scale are, are practically non-existent. Um, because of our um, environment, efficiency and sustainability, is, is, is very important, so cost cutting and profitability are always at the forefront of our, of our minds. We are very legacy dependent, um, both internally and with the relationships we have. Um, predominantly, uh, things have been changed for, for a long period of time. And both because of the, the industry and, and, and the history, we're, we're very vendor driven, so we're, very, his, we're historically very tied to, to the vendor, which um, we currently work with. And therefore, most of the systems are, have been uh, relatively monolithic um, in the past. With the digital transformation, what, was, what has become IT's role within, within Malta? It's to open new revenue streams. So beyond just being the backbone of running the company, but finding ways to launch products, IT products, which are by themselves uh, profitable. Um, innovate in the customer experience uh, and to the next day even the employee experience and to operate more efficiently and, and reduce reduce the costs. We set out to do this um, through this digital transformation through um, deciding on uh, integrating <coughs> with, with an ASB to be able to achieve some of these goals including, and especially things like data governance coming for core um, to the business, having reusable components, uh, providing value and, and, and opportunities, um, and doing business um, iteratively. And what is most important is to become as vendor agnostic as possible. Being the size we are, um, it, it was imperative that in an art, in a, in a, in a negotiation, we did not have our hands tied as much as possible so that we could. Um, move around vendors and to get the best deals and to get the best um, products out of it. Uh, and we did this, as we said, through um, em employing uh, an ESB. And the, the, the ESB that was chosen two years ago was, in fact, um, the Muse of an Endpoint platform. And why did we go with, where did there to go with, with, with Muse of? The, there were obviously many reasons. There were obviously um, the competition was, was very tough, but the, the three most important um, reasons why Airmota went for Mulsop was the hybrid capabilities. Although we have our data center um, in Malta, having um, also the possibility to deploy to the cloud and have hybrid implementation and hybrid um, applications meant we were more flexible and we were where our clients um, and our partners were, not only uh, in Malta. The out-of-the-box conductors that um, were part of the new soft and the point solution, that meant that uh, for the solutions we're looking into, development was always uh, easier and was made out of pre-built components um, many times. And the, the local partner um, operating from Malta with, with a good track record with the, with the solution provided um, in the next people we, we chose to implement uh, our, our implementation. Before we embarked on this, on this journey, Ermolta was always an outside um, actor for, for third party systems we used to interact with. And all the systems um, that we needed and that we operated on would have a point-to-point -point, um, integration. So with reservation, flight operations, 
planning, commercial. We could only use a system if there was a point-to-point -point operation because then water was simply uh, a user, or at least um, only the, the underlying architecture where the system was running. But we never had any control on what was going on between these systems. With the use of um, any point platform, we we moved into the <coughs> into, into an implementation where we had, as, as we're saying, uh, the hybrid. So we had um, a server, a runtime engine running on on our premises, on our data centers, as well as substantial amount or so on on the cloud. We, we complemented that with uh, a suite of applications for continuous delivery, continuous integration um, of our applications with the aim to have um, messaging APIs uh, and file processing over, over this, this environment on an incremental architecture, one which we call all scale, both in the cloud and on-premises. Um, with you know the efficiencies that um, that come with um, this architecture, and also in itself be a product which we develop and we grow on. So, though what we what we started with um, was there to solve those initial problems, the intention was always to look ahead and do much more than just. Um, have an ESB for that, that one application which we, we started off with. And our, our the first application that we did start with was in fact um, a Salesforce integration. Um, little did we know that eventually Salesforce was coming to the picture in a, in a, in a different way. So the, the, the first integration and the, to that extent what drove us even more to have uh, an ESB and um, implement Unisoft was this integration with Salesforce. We need the idea was to have a 360 customer view, but we couldn't do that without integrating with our reservation system. But there was no such integ integration with our reservation system. So the the options were several. Most of them were very pricey, especially when it came to handling over our data um, over to Salesforce. So instead. We developed our own custom um, integration set of APIs, set of data transfers to be able to interface to Salesforce. With that, we could be able to um, measure um, our call center agent and our touch points metrics and KPIs, which is something we, before we couldn't do uh, because the systems were, were, were separate. Um, so they always had to switch between applications, so they couldn't really measure from, from one source. As I said, offer a holistic system with the sixty view with, with all the parts of the of the customer journey, but also be, be in control of the data. So we know what people are querying, we know what data is being requested, uh, we know what customers um, are, uh, are having issues. And we know the kind of data usage Salesforce uh, actually needs. Once we had that in place, um, we started building over it. So, by gain, from the, from the knowledge gained um, on our reservation system and its underlying data, and exposing that data um, over APIs, we then moved into our reservation API, uh, which, as you know, served to for us to distribute our <coughs> our inventory over Ryanair's website. We exposed our reservation system to a set of APIs. And that helped us um, obviously scale the distribution of our flight inventory. So we could not uh, we still start selling only our, our uh, flights on our website but also on anybody who needed while retaining control. Um, we did not need it point to point, Ryanair did not need to integrate with their for the system, but they went effectively through, through us. And we moved to a real time, where previous systems, uh, for them to integrate, they had to work in batch. Um, now we're able to, through these APIs, 
to move to a real time. And also to define the issue in the modular system um, over our reservation system for, for, for a set of larger scope of APS. Following that, we embarked on a rehaul of our flight operations systems, so flight planning and uh, flight monitoring. The aim of this was for um, operational efficiencies, so that we obviously reduce the cost on, on our operation. And this, uh, the challenge here was to be able to integrate several dozens of systems, um, including our current reservation system with with the new um, flight operation systems um, on a real-time event-driven system um, which is high, high, with high availability and with very usable components um, throughout. Eventually, our architectures are looking more, more like this, where Ermoa does no longer an external observer or just an external user, but became um, the center of the interaction between the integrations between the third party systems. So whether it was the reservations, the, the operations, flight chain, crew, um, with the, the, the integration of a point to point, the vendors were no longer concerned with who or what other vendors they were integrating with. Um, all they knew is that they were integrating with the term mortar. And we in turn um, took care to make sure that there was the abstraction between between the vendors. That way, we became less dependent of of our of our vendors, and therefore um, gained a certain level of, of strength in, in negotiations. And we also became um, self sufficient in certain um, in certain situations. And this, for the case of Ryanair, we also became uh, a profit center to a certain extent. Some metrics of, of, our, of our results with the project so far. Uh, definitely we've, we've seen um, very fast time to market using um, the platform, both because of uh, its, its very handy and, and convenient set of, of tools like the Endpoint Studio and the, the connectors, uh, but also just the, the platform as a whole and the tools it, it provides. Um, so, for example, we've seen um, the MVP for, um, for the sales of integration was expected to last eight weeks. In two weeks, we had a product we could um, ship to, to Salesforce to integrate against. The flight reservation API, the, the plan was to have a, a nine-month project. In eight weeks, it was done again to be able for Ryanair to integrate and start testing. Flight operations, the, the recommended project size, project duration from the vendor um, was 18 months. Um, we had to do it in nine, uh, we did it in six. So um, definitely very fast. One click deployments, uh, again, the ease of, of development and the ease of, of deployments um, for, these, for these applications. Our, our deployments range from just two nodes on, on Cloud Hub, on, on on the cloud part of the endpoint um, environment, also to or, or to wait on on, um, on premises. By eight, I don't necessarily eight hosts, referring to eight runtimes. But apart from the runtimes, you have databases, you have um, things like uh, reverse proxies, nginx, um, and, and and several other systems, all satellite to the actual runtime. Um, they have been codified using tools such as such as Ansible. So, as part of the integration pipeline of of me, um, we deploy all of these things with with one click, really. And thanks to in part both the CI the pipeline and the, the tooling of of use of endpoint, um, most of these are are with zero download. Lastly, is, is, as I was mentioning, the heavier use. Um, there it says in the five, it's probably a little bit higher in reality, uh, mostly because of the, the heavy use of out of the box new connectors through the, through the studio and through the, the exchange 
but also through some we've developed ourselves. And Mixer has developed specifically for Elmorta, which we use across applications. Um, just by the spirit of um, kind of the, the, the methodology and the uh, the philosophy behind um, APIs and, and the architecture of, of Microsoft, we, we were able to reuse several of the um, pieces of the architecture and, and APIs we developed um, so as to reduce the need of, of redeveloping. And, and all of this um, so far is, is on tried and tested code, uh, which is high available, um, has a low latency, and so far has proved to be to provide the, the promise 99.99 percent. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, any questions? <laughs>